everybody for coming this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, on behalf of uh, myself, uh, Lisa Fitzgibbons, and Donna McBride uh, from the count from your council, uh, we really want to thank you for participating, for being here. And this morning, hopefully, this will be informative. We we want to just kind of kick off this uh, this effort, if you will. Um, and, and you're an integral part of it because this is this, this will be and needs to be a community solution and not not a city solution. So we we, we want to be part of it, but it's not uh, we're not going to be the, the final solution here. So it's a group effort, and uh, as a, as as part of that group, we want to thank everybody for being here this morning. It's really um, it, I think it's an important effort. It's an important some important work, and. Um, We've had this task force that's been in existence since November of last year. Uh, we had about 22 volunteers. I call them volunteers. We kind of wrote some of them into it, but um, they they were were diligent. Uh, we we worked really since then to, until now to put together this uh, call it a strategic plan and uh, action plan that hopefully you'll you'll uh, you'll find. Informative, um, but again, it's just a plan, and until we implement it, um, it, it will just remain a plan. I think that there's some good materials in it, though. There's some good action, actionable items that I think that we can we can take forward, um, and I'll kind of walk through a, a lot of them with you, and then when we're done, we'll have some handouts uh, that will give you some of the, that same detail that you can take with you. And then we're also going to ask if you are interested to volunteer because we have uh, about seven different uh, committees that have formed through this process that we're going to ask uh, the community to be a part of. And so uh, we also have some other kind of exciting uh, news and, and uh, pieces that we're going to throw out there again today as well. So just to kind of give you a little bit of an update, the police department has been very active in terms of continuing to monitor the homeless that we have here in Cascade. And just last week they did another survey and went out with just three officers and actually talked to 30 homeless folks that were hanging <laughs> that um, the City Council passed on August 6th, 
in support of the, the groups or, or the task force effort. So we wanted to make sure it was kind of an official document. So that was, that's, the, that's the start of it. And what we're going to do also is kind of move that resolution out to the organizations, to the, to our, uh, the, uh, what do we call them, uh, community organizations that are actually out there working with it, you know, the United Way and some of the others, uh, and ask them to also adopt the resolution so we get kind of a, a community buy-in on this. And then the purpose of this meeting really is to fold this effort, this probably end the task force really and move it into the um, the homelessness coalition which is uh, really Maddie's is a big piece of that and she's going to kind of help organize that group or at least call them to order if you will uh, in terms of that process and then that homeless coalition actually will continue on with the committees and the committee members and the chairs of those committees which I'm one uh, Lisa is one also, and so we will continue to be active in it, but the, but the task force itself actually will end today. So the, the Homeless Coalition then now will carry on. And that's, this is the kind of the pass off to the community, if you will. Um, not that we weren't going to stay involved and not that the city is going to still be a, a, a key component to it, but this is, this is where we hand it off to you all and say, okay, here's, here's, a, here's a good plan, we think it's a good plan. Uh, now, now we need to implement. So this, is, this is now where the rubber meets the road. And then I'm going to go through and communicate the plan today and kind of give you some of the highlights of it. Um, we're going to invite you to, to sign up. We have some sign-up sheets here. So, you, so there are some expectations of you all here today. So hopefully you'll you'll uh, help us out. And then um, we we've, we've sent out a press release already, but we're going to do it again. Uh, and hopefully with the help of Heather over here, she'll help us get the message out as well, since the paper is represented here. And then um, uh, the community service groups, again, adopting the purpose and the charter, which you'll see at the end of this. And then the resource center and uh, kind of grand opening budget. We don't, haven't got a grand opening date yet. We're looking at January of this next year. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the resource center, what that means and where, and where it's going to be. And then <clears throat> lastly, again, as you believe, we're looking for volunteers. So these are the folks, I know it's a little bit of an eye chart, but this, this was the, the task force and, and the members and where they came from. It's a pretty uh, broad cross-section of the community. Uh, it's it's the, the city, it's uh, the EAM, which is the uh, Emergency Assistance Ministry, which is made up of uh, all the churches in town. Uh, they've been an integral part of this process. Uh, it's the county. It's our education. We had the high school and the elementary school represented because we do have homeless kids. <coughs> you know it or not. Um, we, we have a lot of young people who are couch surfing at, at best and then some that aren't even couch surfing. So um, uh, then we also had this several service agencies that were part of this process as well. So, so the task force was formed in November of this past year. Uh, again, it was 22 members. Uh, we estimate that there are around 1,000 homeless uh, in our community. We surveyed the last big survey we did. It was part of the, the, the community did. We, I think we surveyed 100, wasn't it? We have 100, sur 100 surveys we actually conducted here. And then, as I mentioned, uh, Wendy was uh, letting me know this morning that the police department actually uh, surveyed another 30 just uh, a week ago. So, and that was with three officers. So when we did our survey, we had uh, 50, 28, 20 people. Yes, ma'am. How far out does, when you say community, the thousands, what area is That's that? just the city of Cascade. It's right in the city of thousands. Now that includes kids, uh, you know, couch surfing, young people, so it's, it's a cross-section uh, of people. And that varies, that number's going to go up and down based on the time of year and that sort of thing, cause, but they're pretty transient also. Um, so we identified also the special populations, the youth, families, veterans, that's part of this uh, process. 
we uh, prioritize the problems faced by homeless mm -hmm. persons, uh, whether it's uh, drugs, alcohol, um, financial, mental. I mean, there's a whole. When we started to peel this onion back, we were kept peeling the, the thing, and it just I, it, it was never ending. Mm -hmm. And um, and we spent two meetings just on this one subject. Um, and by the time we were done, my head was ready to explode because it was such a complicated uh, topic. And if you talk to any of the task force people, I mean, we had post-it notes everywhere uh, in this process. We, we hired a consultant, Cindy Schrader, and unfortunately she's not here today because she really deserves a lot of credit for helping us through this process. And um, but it, it was almost overwhelming in terms of, of uh, really the complication on this, this whole uh, topic. And then identifying uh, the local resources was the, was the next two meetings, literally. It took us another two meetings to post it note all of the resources that were out there and available. And, and one of the reasons for this whole uh, task force was that when, when I took office, year and a half ago, more than a year and a half ago, you know, we identified this as, a, as an issue, uh, and with Donna and Lisa's help, we kind of tried to figure out how could we approach this, you know, in, in a, an organized kind of fashion, because it, we didn't, we didn't think that the city was going to take it on all by themselves, uh, and so we decided to form this task force and then get the community involved, which I think was a, an excellent idea, and it's worked out really well. But one of the one of the problems was that you know this group's giving them water, and this group's feeding them on Thursday, and this group's giving them you know 20 days to stay in a hotel, and this group's you know giving them some clothing, and this group's giving them some food. So it's it was it was. I don't want to demean it, but it was kind of piecemeal, right? It was one little piece at a time. And so there wasn't any, there wasn't a, what I like to call a holistic approach to this thing. There wasn't a, okay, you have a problem, you're homeless, okay, why are you homeless? Or you don't have ID, so now you need to get you a you know, social security card, now we need to get you an identification card, and now we need to get you off the street, and now we need to get you some temporary housing, now we need to get you some affordable housing. Now we need, and we need to get you a job, right? So you, you have to take them from point A to that point F, where we get them off the street, and now they're a functioning uh, person in our society. And, and that just wasn't being done, because you can't just throw stuff at it and, and say, "All right, well, I feel good because I, I fed them today." And I'm not, again, not to demean that, I think that's important because they obviously need food, but we also need to get them off the street. So that was, the, that was kind of the purpose of this task force. That's, that's why we formed it, that's why we put together this plan. Because we think that we can, hopefully, and it's not going to help everybody, you know, maybe you can only get 60% of them off the street, but if we get 60% of them off and get them into a productive, um, you know, part of the society, then I think we've accomplished a, a pretty good goal. And this group, and I'll give it just a little bit of a backstory. this group originally when we started actually went up to Tempe to take a look at their program. And they call it iHelp, um, which is where we stole some of the CG help from. Um, and it is an acronym, it means something, I can never remember what the, the help stands for, but um, it's homeless, uh, you know. um, so it's it's a uh, their program works through their community action group that they have up in Tempe, and they they bring people in. They have workers who work with them, uh, case workers, and then they have they have a shelter, but the shelter moves, and the shelter is it works with the local churches, so. On Monday night, the Presbyterian Church will will house the, the homeless, and they have about 30 to 40 people that they'll that they work with each night. And so, so it isn't a, it isn't a one location that is a shelter. 
the shelter moves and they have a portable shower that goes with it and each shelter has their own bedding and their own um, yeah their own pads uh, they'll feed them dinner and then they feed them breakfast and then then they're gone so and that shelter then the next night might be the Baptist Church and the next night it might be the Catholic Church so all their churches in Tempe sign up they started where they were just doing like two or three nights a week now they do seven nights a week you know, for four weeks a month so their 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 housing or their shelter is their churches and so that's kind of what this model what we're going to talk about because it's only one piece it's just the temporary shelter uh, piece uh, that, that is one, actually one penny of the seven that we perform. So we're, that, that's still work in progress, but that's kind of how we got started. We all met up in Tempe and went through their, their, um, their process. There's also another one in Chandler, and they do, they do a very similar uh, process. And they have about, about a 60 to 70% success rate, which is phenomenal. Especially in this, with this, with this group. So, I kind of digress there, but that's kind of was really where we where we got started. And then, um, we identified that there were about twenty five different or twenty five resource gaps. Also, so this was a long process we went through to get to where we're at. So here's the seven. These are the seven areas that we identified. So affordable housing. So we wanted to, we needed to develop a strategy to expand affordable housing uh, and mitigate associated barriers uh, such as the supply and zoning. So these were, these were, these were kind of the top topics. We also took a look and we, um, we kind of divided the city of Casa Grande into zones. And these are based on, this is based on, um, again, this is a map can't see very well. I got a, I have a slide up here, but it's based on the fact that we took we took these different housing zones and we identified what what is affordable. I mean, how, how do you determine what's affordable? So we basically took the median income and then added in um, you know insurance and and the other your power costs. And basically came up and determined that $800 a month is, is what we consider affordable. Well, there is no $800 a month uh, uh, housing in this country. <clears throat> we get close. There's 806. There's 867. And these are these are by areas, and it's based on on selling prices uh, off of the MLS listings. So we actually used some data and came up with some numbers. So it's kind of interesting. We did we we. Dove into a lot of this, and there's a lot of a lot more detail behind this. So temporary shelters, uh, transitional housing, again, is also was the second area, and again, this group was the one that was kind of charged with the the I help model, and then uh, support services and education, um, developing strategies uh, and coordination between all the groups. So we also had members who were part of this. Um, that, that are actually committee chairs, which we'll which we'll identify for you later. But uh, the public safety, and this was uh, Officer uh, Leos. He, he was uh, he was the key driver in this area, and also a member of our, our committee. Did a phenomenal job. He's also the one responsible for these signs that you see down here. So no handling. That's part of this this effort as well. And then, um, but basically develop policies and training for the police department. And this ongoing um, surveys that they're doing, this all, all came out of, of this process. He also went over to California and reminded us that we really don't have a homeless problem. <laughs> so gave us a little bit of reality and on, on what they're dealing with, especially like San Diego and, some, and Los Angeles. They, they have a huge problem. We, we really are fortunate not to be as, uh, in, the, in their shoes. And then financial, really just developing strategies and also training again, training people on the financial needs. Uh, 
the targeted populations, developing strategies to address unique needs, because we have, there's, there's different groups here. You have, you have youth, you have veterans, uh, you know, and so there's a whole myriad. There's families, there's just individuals, uh, and a whole myriad of, of issues. And then community engagement really is to get the community involved in this. And on a personal <coughs> basis, we want to try and keep everybody engaged. So that's part of the, I think, the responsibility of the city is to keep everybody um, involved and keep this thing moving. So what we did is we actually had action plans for each one of these things. So it really, we, we delved into the, into the weeds, if you will. Um, again, identifying what's affordable, identifying possible housing or um, uh, refurbishment projects. I have, I have a meeting today, actually, <coughs> meet with Clayton Homes, which is a modular home manufacturer, as, because I'm chair of this affordable housing group. So we're going to actually go up to Phoenix and meet with uh, Clayton Homes and see you know, what kind of a home manufacturing can they do. I've also asked a friend of mine who's a, who's a developer to look at properties that are here in Cascadia, some of the old RV parks that are very dilapidated, that are pretty much slum locations and take a look at what opportunities there might be to buy them and then clean them up and maybe pull these Clayton homes into those locations. They're already bad locations, but maybe we can clean them up and maybe we can <coughs> make them affordable housing for people. So we're looking at a lot of different ideas and, the, and we're continuing to move forward with these committees. Uh, as I said, like I'm going to be up there today uh, with a meeting at 11 o'clock. Uh, with Rena, Rena Rain is going to be going with me. So you know, Rena is downtown, the Main Street. So um, new housing projects, locations. I mean, this this gets pretty touchy because it's a you know, the NIMBYs start to come out. You know, not in my backyard kind of thing. So um, where do you put affordable housing? What does it look like? You know, how do you manage it? And how do you make it? How do you make it look nice? And, and, and a good part of our community. But we still need it. We need affordable housing. There's, um, we've lost a lot of Section 8 housing here mm -hmm. in the last year, uh, whether you know it or not. And so we've been throwing a lot of people out on the street, um, elderly mostly. Um, it's, a, it's a sad situation, but it's a fact. Because the average, I think the average rent in, this, in the county of Canal is like 850, supposedly. I'm not sure where that 850 is, but uh, it's probably not in Casagrande. I think we're more like 1,200. And so, uh, again, as I said earlier, that's not affordable. Uh, if you're on a fixed income and a low income, um, you're going to struggle at $1,200 a month. Um, anyway, zoning exemptions, you know, all this kind of stuff. And the city has the power to do that. And so that's why we're, we're going to continue to stay active in this. And again, expanding efforts to uh, incorporate the rest of Pinal County. So take this model, which we've already given to Apache Junction, for example. And uh, Manny is the, the representative for Pinal County. And she also is helping uh, Apache Junction with this same issue. So we've shared this entire presentation with Apache Junction. So our goal is to move this just beyond Cascarande and, and share it with anybody who would, who would like to, to, to use it. So this is a map I mentioned. And again, we took MLS listings and selling prices and we took, basically we took the median income uh, and then divided it a, by a third because you should only be spending a third of your income on your, on your housing like, uh, expense. And came up with an affordable, affordable house price uh, or expense of eight hundred dollars a month. And, as you, and if you can see that map at all, there's, I mean, there's one that's seven fifty, and that's not even in the city of Cascade. That's actually um, the what's it called? Colonial mm -hmm. Mill Soul, which is up on the north north side of town, and not necessarily where you want to live. Anyway, <laughs> that that average up there is about <coughs> so that's really the only only place. Yes, sir. Is the uh, 
Utilities included in that even there? Yes, it is. That's utilities, insurance. Mm -hmm. That's how much you would have to pay per month. Okay, so the next is the temporary shelters. Again, this is that I help model that I that I already talked about. Uh, we're going to call it CG helps, just to be consistent and, and have something that's identified for the for the city of Casa Grande. And if you notice on these panhandling signs as well, we put that website on the on that sign. So this is the area we're going to kind of kind of push people towards if they want to help from a financial standpoint. Uh, CGhelps.com. It's not active yet. We own the site. And we're going to be hopefully getting it up, up and running soon. Uh, it's going to be administered by CARA, uh, which is our community action uh, organization, and they'll be responsible for for uh, using using that money towards this effort. And uh, again, they also help us with the resource center. Um, they are they already have some people who help and work with work with the homeless in terms of getting them temporary housing. So it's kind of a natural to, uh, to have them kind of be the lead on this, but they're not going to be the only one when they need help. So uh, then that's kind of this effort is to, is to get some help. Again, create a coordinated transitional housing. So this is to kind of move people off the street, get them cleaned up. Um, we, hopefully we'll be able to get some portable showers and be part of this process. And then, and then also get the churches involved and then move into that maybe two, three nights a week to start with and then see where that goes. Um, but, that's, but that's what this is all about. And then support services and education, uh, employment, you know, promote collaborative uh, effort in local services. This is really that the coordination of all of the services, uh, transportation, working on our, our transportation system, even here in, in the city of Cascadande. Uh, but between Coolidge, Maricopa, and Cascadande, we have a transit system, and right now the city of Cascadande is not involved in that. Um, it's, it's really Coolidge and Florence that are kind of <coughs> heading it up. Um, we are working on our own transportation system with the city, and hopefully we'll, we'll get involved and get coordinated uh, with, with CARI, which is already running. Up and running. Um, education addressing the barriers that the homeless have, you know, uh, kids in, in our public schools. One of the challenges we have right now is really figure out what where the young people are and the youth because of uh, privacy laws. You know, the high school can't tell us who is homeless and who isn't. So it's a it's a big challenge to try and make sure we bring the services for those young people that need it. And right, right now, it's, it is a big, it's a big challenge, but we're going to work through that. That's why we involved the high school. That's why we involved even the elementary school in the process, because I think if they know what we're doing and they're part of this process, it, it, can, it can improve uh, the communication, certainly. And then, you know, supporting housing, mental health. Um, really, we have a... Uh, we started, the city started a new website about a year ago, and that website now has, has a link on it that says Healthy Community. If you go to our website, and under Healthy Community, there's three, there's three sub areas. One is Community Health, which now has all of the, the, all the social services that are available in the, in the county, not in the county, but in the city. And even the, the uh, is it 311? 311? 211, excuse me. 211 uh, connection, which is for the whole county. And we'll, you can go in there and you can actually find out services that you might need. Um, not that the homeless have access to a computer, but they can go to the library and, and get access to this. But it also helps people who are trying to help other folks. So it is, there is a resource out there for you. And then the other, the second point is education. So we're going to have all the education uh, and all the schools and the charter schools all have a link also on, under healthy community. And then the last one is volunteers. So we'll have an opportunity there for organizations to look for volunteers and or for you if you're interested to volunteer and go to that website. Community centers and support expanding neighborhood-based community uh, centers uh, for at-risk families. These are all these are all action plans that 
we've put underneath each one of these committees. And there's a specific goal, and then there's specific you know, action, and there's a person who's responsible for it, and then what's happened. So we have this all on a spreadsheet that each of these committees then will move forward and work to accomplish. Under public safety, again, policies and guidelines, um, this is all, most of this has been accomplished already, so um, Officer Lales is way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Again, the, the, the panhandling signs, we actually have, I actually have a map of where they're going to go. So if you're interested, most of it's on Pinal and, and Florence um, and I-10 and then also by, Fry, by Fry's, both Fry's actually. Um, so that's, that's, we have about 12 locations identified. Um, we're working with ADOC, so we have to get permission from ADOC to put it up on, on, their, on their sections, also on the uh, federal highway, we have to get federal highway permission when we put it out at I-10. So it's not as easy as just sticking it on the sign. So it's a little more complicated. And then financial really, this is this is uh, expanding community engagement, but it's also increasing financial literacy <coughs> for youth and, and young people. So this is a this is kind of a concerted effort to move, um, you know, get people informed on what you know financial responsibilities. Hopefully, people don't get themselves in a situation where they become homeless. Um, then target populations again. This is youth and veterans. Uh, it's identifying the different um, folks that are out there. We've, we've got goals and for each of the populations and targeted areas. It's, a, again, just really trying to identify who is homeless and where they're, where they're located. Yeah, seniors, seniors as well, uh, victims of domestic violence. I mean, you, you can go on and on. There's a, 15 reasons why um, number one people are homeless and there's 15 different uh, different groups that, that are a part of that. And then finally community engagement. This is just making the community aware, making sure we get the community involved and educating um, everybody on, on what this effort's all about. Uh, and that's where you all come in. That's where you are, you are again, where the rubber meets the road. This whole process in the communities, even though we we're going to disband the, the uh, task force, the, the committees will continue. The city will continue to be involved. Uh, we will be part of those committees. And this homeless coalition will move forward and try to basically, we'll do quarterly updates. Each committee will do quarterly updates with the, with the committee. Um, in fact, um, Manny, if you wanted to talk a little bit about the, um, the Homeless Coalition, if you want to come up. So the Homeless Coalition started in 2016 because a local community member came to me at an emergency assistance ministry meeting and said, we have an issue in a certain part of our town and will you help? And I met with this person after the meeting and I said, let's put a meeting together. And this is what it looks like two years later. I think that this is huge. Um, so real quick, the, the Homeless Coalition meeting happened the second Thursday of each month from 9.30 to 11 in the morning at the United Way currently. We are hoping, because of this coordinated effort, that our attendance will increase. And when we have our quarterly meetings, that we'll need a larger location than the United Way has. So we've made an agreement with St. Anthony's <coughs> to be able to move our meetings from the United Way building to St. Anthony's because they have much nicer amenities. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the meetings will continue to be the second Thursday of each month uh, from 9.30 to 11. But for right now, they're still at the United Way building. So if you'd like to come, the next meeting is whatever the second Thursday is <laughs> of September. September? No, that's the first. It's like the 13th or something. It's the second. Yeah, I got 
have to do your math. So be Not the first, but second. Be the third. <laughs> Um, just real quick, just to let you know, in that time, at first when we started meeting, it was really slow going. People were frustrated because it wasn't moving along. And when you're doing this kind of community work, you have to talk, and you have to discuss, and you have to flesh out ideas, and say, and you have to come to some kind of a consensus. So the work that this group did is, is really commendable, because it was, Mark Vanderbilt, where are you? Right here. It was his idea to create this task force and to actually move this forward like this. And I want to give him kudos for having done the homework because it's because of him that we're in this place. His idea. But in the meantime, the group still meets and does a lot of other things besides this. We've done the street sheet, which I had to go out and get. I have them. It's a pocket sized resource guide that. Uh, you can hand out, if you're giving someone a bottle of water, you can give them this resource guide. And I have them in the blue bag. Oh, okay, well I brought a whole slew of them. <laughs> so you can take some. So it's a pocket sized resource guide, double sided, and we updated, uh, we tried semi-annually, but you know how that goes. And, and you can fold it up, really simple, and hand it out with water. If you're doing hygiene kits or you're doing anything like that, you can give this with it, and it's four half a gram. But because most of the services are canal county based, many of them actually work throughout the county. You can also get it online. Oh yes, you can print them out online. Oh, our website. And then they've also, oh, just get them. I want to let you know that I started to carry them in my car. And when I see somebody panhandling, mm -hmm. I hand them one of those. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> Give them a bottle of water while you're at it because it needs to hydrate. Excellent idea. So, but they've also helped with the point in time count, which is the annual uh, homeless count that has to be done. And in and like it was made reference in January, they counted a hundred some odd folks, and 20 people got together. That is an important count. Because that is the number that the federal government, that's one of the indicators they use to determine how much money our area gets to combat homelessness. So having an accurate count is really important. And then they also help with the hydration map. And because of Apache Junction and Casa Grande, uh, assistance in the hydration work that we did with the maps, we, the United Way, actually invested in a heat relief network, which you might have heard about, where we coordinate the water distribution and collection all throughout the county. Um, the other thing that this group has helped with is the Project Connect, which is a one-day, one-stop, wraparound service day. So someone who is at risk of becoming homeless or is homeless or needs <coughs> assistance, they can come to this day, it's going to be at St. Anthony's <coughs> in March. Do you have the date? Uh, it's towards the end of the month. Is it like the 28th or something? Uh, it's up the last Friday of March. And service agencies like Sun Life and Sympatico and um, they just come together and have vision. The Lions Club and um, other, the, the court was there and others come together so that we can address the gaps that agencies, uh, that uh, folks might have in overcoming whatever's creating their financial issue. Last year we had 45 attendees come to participate and got telephones and free ice creams and things like that. So it was a good event and we hope that this year we can grow it. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell. So we would love to have you come because you never know what you'll bring to the table. You never know what you know or don't know until you come. We've had many people come and they decide to stay because they, they have connections in the community and they can bring different points of view. So we appreciate that we've had an opportunity to help. Yes, Scott? Laundry love. Oh, yes. <laughs> Laundry love. The St. Peter's Episcopal Church, the Women's Club, am I correct? Outreach. Outreach. They started a program all by themselves where they were paying for the laundry one day a month at a 
certain laundry and or quarterly, start off quarterly with their donations. And one time impromptu somebody sent me a flyer and said, hey, will you help spread the word? And I checked back with them when it was time. And in the meantime, what we've done is now we've increased it to four churches that sponsor laundry for four folks. And because of what I learned in Apache Junction with the soup kitchen that they give out shower vouchers, I said, hey, that could work with laundry. So we hand out laundry vouchers, and the group labels them. They number them and hand them out to different agencies so we can figure out which agency is actually funneling the clients back to the laundry lab day. And um, the largest user of the laundry love coupons is the elementary school district. So we already know where there is a gap. So these four churches take turns each month. And um, because we have four, which means that they do quarterly, right? So three would be quarterly. Now we have an extra one. Now we're going to be able to do it every third month. We'll have twice a month. So if there are social service clubs out there that would like to participate, we have room for at least two more so that we can offer the service to those families in need twice a month. And I think that's a phenomenal St. Peter's, I commend you. I'm sorry that I haven't got it. Um, but that is what we've worked on together as a community. And I think it's little things that mean a lot. It's the small acts of kindness that create large impact in people's lives. You don't have to do monumental things. It's the little things that matter most. I have lots of these in my bag, so please come get them. So, the resource center. Uh, the city is going to work with uh, CARA and other social organizations to um, take the PERT Center, which is over here in PERT Park, and uh, convert that to a, to a resource center, at least temporarily. Uh, this is probably not the long term home for the resource center, but the city will enter a, into a lease agreement, uh, probably at a dollar a year for the organization. Um, I think we're, our target is to open in January of this next year and have some caseworkers there. Uh, there'll be some limited hours to start with till we get the get it up and operating. There's going to be some obviously some operational expenses to to do that. Um, so a car is going to need some help. We need to uh, we need to back them and, and help them get this going, uh, and it's not totally going to be on on their shoulders. It will be on the city. It's going to be on the rest of the community as well. So um, I think the operating expenses we can we can take down to a dollar a year. It's the heating and the cooling and the you know the cleaning and all that other stuff that you know you have to do when you when you have a building and you have people in it. There's desks, there's um, other things you know, that need to also be uh, acquired, which I think as a community, we, I'm sure we can all come up with. Um, tables, chairs, all that good stuff. Um, and I know, that, uh, I know that Mary Lou has a couple things she wants to talk about with regard to the Resource Center, since uh, they're going to be kind of the key players in this. But the idea is that, that a homeless person can come in there and get, get help with, a, with a, a, an actual case worker so we can actually find out what, what, why are they homeless? You know, what, what is the reason that they're homeless? And oh, by the way, tonight, you know, the shelter's gonna be at the Presbyterian Church, so you go over to the Presbyterian Church and get a meal and, and take a shower and, um, and have a place to stay uh, overnight and then get a breakfast and, and then come back because we're gonna take you over to Social Security or Social Security's gonna be here tomorrow. So the idea is that this resource center will have hours that will be available to people. And let's say Sapatico, who does some mental health work, will be there every Tuesday from you know, 8 to 5. Uh, or Social, Social Security will be there uh, every Wednesday from noon until 5. So there will be hours that are set 
uh, that, that, the, that our social service organizations will have the ability to have a, a location to go to to help the, with this homeless process. And so um, this is just some of the pictures of the inside. There's the actual kitchen, and then there's a big area that they're using for uh, yoga right now. <clears throat> Once the community center is open, uh, then that all those classes will move over to the to the new community center. So we might have to share some of the space at least for a couple months until the community center is done. Which I'm saying it's going to be March. The city keeps telling me not to tell people March. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm actually putting a lot of pressure on them to make sure it is March. Uh, it, I think we'll have some part of a grand opening in, in April, but I, but I believe it'll be, it'll be ready by March. Um, and so once that's done, then, then we'll have full use of this facility. Um, then there's an office area, and you can't see it, but there's a door to the left there. There's a room office back in there. And then, again, this is just kind of a checklist of stuff that we're going to be, uh, we're going to need for the resource center. And I'll ask Mary Lou or Rosales what she is with Cara. Um, and this is, she's going to be an integral part of this, so she has a couple things she wants to talk about as far as the resource center. Good morning. I'm Mary Lou Rosales, and I'm executive director of Community Action and the Resources Agency, which stands for CAR. Most people know us as CAR. And no, it's not a lady, it's our acronym. <laughs> um, I wish I could stand here as, as casual as the mayor. <laughs> a little bit too tall. But we're really excited because uh, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen because the city is behind it. And, and all of you, it's wonderful to see so much interest. And, and I do hope you come up afterwards and sign up. Um, maybe you don't, won't know exactly what to do, but we'll find something if it's going to take all of us. Um, and he's passing out uh, a flyer. And this is sort of just a, a general idea how this will work. Um, we, there's a lot of room for feedback. This is a draft, right? A draft. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't write draft. As the mayor instructed me to do. And initially we thought, you know, a couple of days, nine to one, uh, then maybe expand it and keep expanding it to fit the need. And actually we, uh, Lisa Councilman, Norman Fitzgibbons uh, and I attended uh, or visited a resource center in Apache Junction. It's called Genesis. And so we've got a lot of ideas there. And Heather Patel is here with the city of Apache Junction. You can ask her some other questions. Um, and so we, uh, the way we envision it is having you know, a receptionist or two, and then having some staff there to manage it. Initially, it will be car staff. And well, even later, if we find more fun, but initially, it will be uh, our staff, our case management. And we envision that, that they'll come in and find out uh, what, what do they need? What do they need? You know, easy, some easy items. We want food. Uh, with our lunch program, through Seeds of Hope, uh, the food pantry. And so we'll start connecting them with services. And then um, we will have regularly scheduled visits or hours for agencies as our district. Um, we haven't forgot anybody. Um, the meet. <coughs> but as you see, Cara, Arizona Emperor, Salvation Army, Sunlight, uh, DES, Benefits, 
child support, uh, HOHB, our Mayor of Heroes program, and then Eagle One. We've got to have Eagle One. Does everybody know what Eagle One is? Alright, what, what is it, Kim? Eagle One is a uh, 39 foot RV that goes out across the Pendulum County to take services to veterans and we visit each community once a quarter uh, to take information to the veterans on where they can get help and services. It's a big, free guy. It's very cool. Uh, <coughs> and national community, <coughs> excuse me, help partners. Um, they offer services, housing benefits to the veterans, connecting them to the veterans. Then our wonderful behavioral health agencies, there's uh, Horizon Health and Wellness, and that's Banny, what a fun, helping associates, and others that I'm not aware of um, their full uh, services. And these will be um, Encouraged by Simpatico. Where's Maria? Right here. There you go. Uh, Simpatico is the funding source, and they're fully committed to the Research Center yeah. and to all the plans regarding the task force. Um, and El County House Division, uh, Allen Allen, and all those services for uh, housing, say, so, uh, Social Security. And then, as I mentioned, the hot lunch program, Sydney to the call, goodwill, the courts. There's so many wonderful things that are happening uh, throughout the country. Uh, the courts are a different giving, uh, non-criminal um, misdemeanors, warrants, and they can be resolved and worked out. Um, that's to come. That's not set up yet. But I think that's encouraging, very encouraging. Um, then we also plan to uh, to help them with obtaining, as the mayor uh, described, you know, obtaining their, G, their um, ID, their birth certificate, uh, things that they may not have ever, uh, even out of state. We do that already. And I know uh, veterans groups and others do as well. Um, and we we do want to. Um, we need everybody's help with the outreach. What that means is, how are the homeless going to find out about the research center? And so we plan to make a flyer, inviting them, explaining a little bit about what it is. But we we need everyone to help us with that. Um, we can put flyers, you know, for churches, you know, the agencies, um, downtown. I know we know how it with that, right? <laughs> um, even food city, you know, places that we know where, where people gather. And I think we can really make a tremendous uh, effect and try to help resolve a lot of their issues. But, but also know that many of them need so much help that it's going to take a while till they get their counseling services and feel comfortable in possibly having their own place. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, <coughs> houses, homes that the mayor has talked about. So, it, but it does take uh, all of us. All of um, regarding um, the IL, the, that the mayor also described where the churches uh, provide house, uh, overnight shelter and a meal um, that, that works so well in Chandler and Tempe and, and these other locations. And that's to come later, not necessarily January. I just wanted to. Yeah. I'll share that with you. The mayor is so excited about it. Mm -hmm. He wants to know. But um, I don't know if you have any questions or input. 
Is this limited to just homeless or people or families that may be just on the edge of becoming homeless? It's, it's going to be it's for anybody who needs help. So I think the resource center especially, that should be an opportunity for if you know somebody who's in a distressed situation, you know, there's opportunities that we can point them in the right direction, get them some help. There's no reason why um, we can't use that to help somebody before they get to that situation. But it's certainly better than, than being homeless and then we have to start over. Yeah. Is this program, is it going to include some type of like job training? Yes, there's a network as part of it. There's a network as part of this. So the, 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 the best part about this whole process is the fact that we've, we've gotten the community together. So we're all talking. It's not you working on one thing and you working on another. It's everybody's working together. So from, from getting them off the street to getting them a job. So, I mean, that's, that's what this is about. And that's why it's a community effort and not an individual effort. So, I, and I can't stress that enough. I mean, from, from our courts, I mean, our city judge is here, Yanni is here today. Um, so, you know, thank you for being here as well. To our police department that's represented here. I mean, this is a, this is a whole city-wide uh, program to, you know, United Way, to CARA, uh, Sapatico. I mean, it's, um, this isn't just one group doing something. This is everybody doing something. And that's, that's really the most important thing you don't go away with anything else. At least go away with the fact that you feel, should feel comfortable that we're actually all talking and we're all working on the same thing and the same outcome. So I think that, in my mind, was it, it was the single biggest you know um, accomplishment of this effort in the task force was really to get everybody together. Any other questions? Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll can entertain a few more questions. Let me just kind of wrap this up a little bit, okay. and then and then we'll move into the, the sign-up sheets and volunteer and our and our individual conversations. We have plenty of time. Uh, we said seven to nine, and we should be done here shortly. And please give Mary Lou a, a round of applause. Thank you, Mary Lou. Again, these are some of the items that are up on the board. Just these were just kind of our our cheat sheet, if you will. In terms of uh, what we need to do, and some of the things we still need to accomplish, um, and to Mary Lou's point, the the CT helps part, which is the shelter, isn't ready to go yet. It's not ready for prime time, but I'm sure it hope it will be by January. I'm gonna throw that over to Mr. Benderhain over there. We also work with the county. The county's gonna help us get bedding and. Um, Cots, because what out of this, what we what we kind of accomplished was that through the churches, because the county is looking for emergency um, like overnight facilities, right? And so they they had had a difficult time trying to sign up uh, areas because usually they kind of go to schools. Well, schools aren't open all the time. The churches are open all the time. So the churches are a natural. Um, place really to set up as emergency shelters and so by signing up as a, as a EN or as a shelter for the, the homeless we also now have shelters emergency shelters set up as well and so the county is going to help us with the bedding for those emergency shelters so it'll be it'll serve two purposes and just because we got together and we talked about it it happened so it's uh, again just little things that, that have happened through this process uh, that I'm really excited about, uh, and that's just one little piece of it. Um, so it's it, it's all been it's all been an amazing um, process that we've gone through. Uh, I really can't thank the, the task force enough, uh, the 22 members and their organizations for everything that they've done. Um, you know, I mean. To the point where you know we talked about you know when you find somebody on the street and you run their ID and you find out that they you only know, have a warrant out for them, well, what are you going to do? What do you do with them? Um, and there's more than one of them out there, uh, depending on what the warrant's for, of course. Um, but you know, parking tickets not paid or something like that, or a, a speeding tickets not paid because it was you know ten years ago. 
they've been on the street for the last seven years. It's, you know, it's not, you, know, you got to do something with it. So that's why we've involved the courts, that's why we've involved the police department. Um, and from a police department standpoint, this gives them a resource also to try and help somebody when they run in, and they encounter somebody out on the street. So, um, and they, they've done a wonderful job. And, um, our, our chief uh, has been very supportive and, and he's been an integral part of this as well. So, if there's anything that you know I can express to everybody here today is number one, thank you for being here. Um, and then number two, please take a look at the sign up sheets we have up here. Uh, we have plenty of time. There's still some food, there's some coffee. Uh, you don't need to run off because you've committed till nine o'clock. So 